Welcome to Blueprint IoT and today's topic is PCBs. PCB translates to printed circuit board. Historically, those circuits have been printed with a silk screen onto a board. These days, there is still kind of a printing process involved, but anyway, the name stayed the same. Circuit refers to the actual electric circuit out of copper right on the top of the actual board, which is made out of fiberglass and epoxy. But before we are diving into the details, let's take a moment and check out how they actually look. Normally they have a green appearance with gold or copper dots, the pads, where you solder the electric components onto. For more advanced applications, there are foldable types available, which enable crazy new form factors. In case you wonder where to find PCBs in your daily life, basically everywhere. Starting from your computer, your phone, all the way to development equipment like a Raspberry Pi. Your headphones, USB drive, camera, speaker, calculator, or even your car, just to name a few. But let's dive into the reason we actually needed PCBs in the first place. Let's assume we have a diode, a resistor, and a capacitor, and we want to wire them all up. So we could use simple wires and solder them down to every single component. But what's about adding some resistors? Let's put the first one parallel to the diode, the second one parallel to the capacitor, and the last one parallel to all of the three components on the right hand side. Well, we created hell of a mess and this while still playing with a quite simple circuit. Beside the mess, it would take ages to solder all this together and fit it somehow into a housing. So we need to come up with something smaller, more reliable and capable for mass production. So let's try to get the circuit done by using a PCB. First, we need to introduce some pads where we can solder the components onto. Time to get the serial connection of the diode, the resistor and the capacitor done. Not that hard. To get the first resistor parallel to the diode, we can dock onto this trace and introduce another one to catch the diode. Same story with the second one. Catch the trace on the right hand side, introduce another one to catch the capacitor. For the last one, things get a bit more complicated. After catching the trace on the right hand side, we cannot get to the diode. But why? Let's take a look why we need multiple layers once we get serious about PCBs. Assume we want to run a trace all the way along here. Since the trace we are running is pure copper and the other trace we have to cross as well, we will create a connection where no connection is meant to be. So instead of running our trace all the way on the top layer, we are going to dive down to the bottom layer, sneak underneath our trace and get to the top again. By doing so we avoided any interference with the other trace. Let's get back to our circuit. We can easily run our missing trace on the bottom layer without interfering with any of the other traces. In case circuits get more crowded, we can always introduce more layers to the PCB. But wait a second, what the heck are layers and how to get more than two? A PCB is normally a multi-layer with a core in the middle, copper plating on the top and the bottom, all sandwiched together and coated with solder mask, the green stuff you normally see on the surface of a PCB. Since they are quite thin, we take a look on a picture taken by a microscope. We can easily spot the solder mask at the top and the bottom. There's a top and bottom layer out of copper, as well as two layers in between. So this is a four layer PCB. In between we can see glass fibers embedded in epoxy. But let's face it, two layers are most of the time not enough. So if we want to have four layers, we have to sandwich two times two layer PCBs together. To do so, we introduce a pre-break, which is short for pre-impregnated. The pre-break is a similar material like the core, so again fiberglass and epoxy, but this time the epoxy is only semi-dry. So after stacking those two layer PCBs onto each other, putting the pre-break in between, we apply pressure and heat and bind all of it together kind of a toasted sandwich. No matter if you're talking about a 2, 4 or 8 layer PCB, at the end there will be always some kind of coating applied. This coating, the solder mask, is not necessarily green, even though that's the most common color. The solder mask prevents us from soldering two pads together and shortcutting our circuit. 
Beside this, it also improves the appearance of the PCB and protects the copper from corrosion. If you want to know more about the production process of a PCB, stay tuned for our next video or check out recommended videos down below. Thanks for watching and make sure to let me know your questions in the comments down below.